Question number two, Materia Turei. Tēnā koe, Mr Speaker. Tēnā koutou i te whare. My question is to the Minister for Building and Housing and asks, will the Residential Tenancies Amendment Bill guarantee that no New Zealand renter will live in a cold, damp, mouldy house that makes them sick? And if not, why not? Uh, Mr Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Uh, this bill will make 180,000 homes warmer, drier and safer without imposing excessive compliance costs on landlords that would inevitably be passed on to tenants. The bill requires that all rental properties have a smoke alarm uh, by the 1st of July this year and that they are progressively insulated over a period of three years. No bill provides an absolute guarantee it is as foolish as pretending that our criminal laws present, prevent all murders or that our road safety laws prevent all motor accidents. Supplementary. Order, 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 order. Can I just, before I call the member, say the level of interjection, uh, we've been away for a week, so I'd expect some level of interjection, but if it's going to be disruptive, then I will start naming members, mentioning their names, and then if it continues beyond that, I would, with, with regret, would be asking some members to leave. Matilia, to raise supplementary question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Will the minister take the advice of the Child Poverty Action Coalition, the po Child Poverty Action Group, and include a rentals warrant of fitness in the Residential Tenancies Amendment Bill to provide a more comprehensive uh, improvement in the warmth? the dryness and safety of rental houses. Uh, Mr Speaker. The Honourable Dr Nick uh, There are two problems uh, with the warrant of fitness proposal. I'm advised by officials that it would cost $225 per home or $100 million per year just for the compliance and the administration without fixing a single house. The single, second concern I have is the sort of pedantic nature of having clipboard Charlies putting unreasonable requirements. For instance, if I look at the member's own bill, it would comply my beehive office as unsafe because I don't have a safety strip on my window or my flat. And I don't think that uh, is reasonable. And then the third part is, of course, uh, that any cost that you impose actually goes on to rents. And if you're going to put $225 on the cost of every rental property in New Zealand, that is actually a cost that will impact on the very families that we should be helping. Order. Order. Supplementary question, Materia Turo. Thank you, Mr Speaker. What then is the cost of the lives of 15 children who die each year from poor housing? and the 42,000 child admissions to hospital each year from cold, damp housing and poverty. Mr Speaker, oh, the Honourable Dr. Mr. Speaker this government has made more progress on getting our homes insulated than any other government in history. And that is why we have a bill before the House that is going to require all homes to be insulated by the 1st of July and to require a smoke alarm because there are too many New Zealanders that die unnecessarily as a consequence. What we're not going to do is to impose a massive bureaucracy that will impose costs on the very families that we are trying to help. Of order, sir. A point of order, Materia Turi. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The Minister referred to the cost of uh, a warrant of fitness scheme. I asked him the financial cost of the deaths of 15 children and the 42,000 child admissions. He did not answer that question order, at order, all. Order, order, and nor could, nor could you expect a member to do that, a minister to do that, when you consider that it's a supplementary question and then to put a dollar value onto 15 deaths and what I think it was 14,000, um, uh, 40,000 hospital admissions, I don't think the member could rightfully expect that. The question was without doubt addressed. Supplementary. Supplementary, supplementary question, Materia Turo. Has the minister sought any advice on the cost of 15 child deaths and the 42,000 child admissions to hospital caused every year by cold, damp housing. 
Uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Doctor. Uh, yes, I have. There's been extensive cost benefit analysis on the government proposals. They showed that a warrant of fitness imposed more cost than benefit, and that the proposal that we have in the bill is the best way in which we can address the very issues that the member is concerned with. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Joanne Hayes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. What progress has been made in improving home insulation over the past 15 years? Oh, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Dr. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the previous government managed to do 2,000 home insulations per year, or 18,000 uh, over their nine years. We firstly put a focus on insulating those 30,000 state houses. We then provided for Warm Up New Zealand, that provided for 290,000 houses. This bill provides for a further 180,000 houses, a total of 500,000. I do find it a bit rich for members opposite that did less than 20,000 to criticise this government for doing 500,000. Point of order, sir. Order. Point of order, Materia Turo. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, the Minister was not required to answer my initial question on the cost of death and child emissions because he didn't order. have the information. He just admitted that he does have order. that information. The I'd the ask question, that he no, be required order. to answer the question. The question was, had the Minister sought any advice? His very first question was, yes, he had sought advice on that issue. Without doubt, the question was answered. Order, uh, Mr Speaker. Point of order, the Honourable Doctor. To help the House, because there has been some questions about the cost-benefit analysis, a review has been done by Arthur Grimes, and I seek the leave of the House leave, to table. Leave us sought to table that cost-benefit analysis. Is there any objection? There is none that can be tabled. Supplementary. Oh, supplementary question, Materia Turo. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, does, is the Minister denying the evidence of, the, of Victoria University Students Association, who report students... The Vic Order. Start the question again, please. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Is the Minister denying the evidence of the Victoria University Students Association, who report students having to spend over 98 per cent of their student living cost loans on rent for cold, damp, mouldy homes that makes them sick? Uh, Mr Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Dr uh, The Mr. member Smith. wisely makes the point that there is a connection of making sure homes are affordable as well as good quality. And what the member needs to look at in this bill is the new enforcement provisions. Because what the government's view is, rather than spending a compliance cost that has a warrant of fitness over all 500,000 homes, what we actually need to do is, in, is to enforce the existing housing regulations, of which many of those student flats breach, and actually give my ministry the powers to prosecute those. And that is what is provided in the bill. The member may be interested that when I met with the Student Association, they were very positive about those provisions in the bill. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Materia Turo. Thank you, Mr. Mr Speaker. Does the Minister dismiss, dismiss the evidence of the Auckland Public Health Service, the Public Health Association and the Nurses Association, who all say that the bill does not go far enough to protect health and that what is needed is a proper warrant of fitness in this bill. Uh, Mr Speaker. The Honourable Dr Nixon. Uh, where those groups are incorrect is that they do not look at the $100 million cost of the bureaucracy of a warrant of fitness over all 500,000 rental properties in New Zealand. And what is a far more sensible response, that is what's provided for the bill, is for us to actually focus on those homes that are substandard, that breach the current housing regulations, and to actually get on and enforce those. And that is a far more sensible approach to this issue than a warrant of fitness over all 500,000 homes. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Materia Turo. Thank you, Mr Speaker. If the Minister won't take the advice of these groups, will he take the advice of Andrew King of the Property Investors Federation, who agrees that cold, damp rental homes are a problem in New Zealand and that government should fund power bill vouchers to the 30,000 families with children who have cold-related health conditions from rental properties. Uh, Mr Speaker. The Honourable Dr uh, Mr Nick King Smith. has made very plain to me that he does not support a warrant of fitness. What he would wish is that the government, either through tax or other grants, paid for the costs of landlords getting their properties uh, up to spec. It is the government's view 
that landlords do have responsibilities, and while through Walmart New Zealand we have provided $500 million in insulating houses, that landlords also have responsibilities to have their rental properties up to standard. Question number